following will show you the toner transfer method of getting an image onto an etching plate plus some additional more advanced techniques of working with intaglio or etching. You're going to start with a regular copper plate that has already had the sides beveled, the edges beveled, and is cleaned and degreased. You're going to tape that down to a piece of newspaper that is on the hot plate that you're going to be using, making sure that you're not touching it with your fingers so that any oil from your fingers gets onto it. What you're going to do is put on top of that on a transfer of, uh, it's a transparency, and uh, it's a toner. It can't be inkjet, but um, you're going to just tape that tightly across the surface, again back onto the piece of paper. You want that as freshly printed as it possibly can be because it transfers the best when it is freshly printed. You also have to make sure that the toner side is down and you will know that because your image um, will look the right way on the, pl the plate there, um, that it will be backwards because remember it's going to have to print the other way around to be forward. So the text on this one you could see was backwards. You're going to start on that hot plate at cold without any heat on it and you're going to turn it to the warm setting. Starting in the center you will vigorously rub it with a wooden spoon. You don't really want to touch the plate because it's going to heat up very quickly with it being metal. Keep going over the surface. The piece of paper that's on top there actually is easier to rub than the plastic. That's why we put that there. Eventually it stays in place through static electricity. You're going to keep moving in 25 degree increments after the heat gets to the level that it's supposed to be each time the, the light turns off. So you keep turning that up until you get to about 300, 325 degrees and then the image should be set. Don't hold it by the plate, take it by the uh, the paper and you'll see that part of that when I uh, took that off of there uh, did not completely come off and so you can make your adjustments later with that. Don't touch the plate when it comes right off because it is going to be about 300 degrees. Let it cool down and then once it's cool you can start uh, you're putting the stop out in any areas that didn't completely transfer here I'm doing that and I'm also making sure that I go over the areas where the bevels are on the side before I put it into the acid. So what you can do with this is approximate a photo etching process um, but it can also be good just for getting a, a drawing that you uh, have scanned in onto uh, your plate and then reworking it with traditional processes later. So here I'm putting it in the acid. I first put it in for four minutes um, and then actually right here you can see that I'm making a little bit of a stencil. Because so much of the area of the copper is open on this, uh, what I need to do is make a false uh, aquatint and I'm going to do that with spray paint. Here I'm just kind of lightly spraying the spray paint over the area. I didn't want it over the big text area and where the moon is on this. So it's about 50-50% on there. I then put that uh, plate in for another four minutes after it had dried and brought it out yet again, sprayed it. Um, you can see some little speckles on there. You have to make sure that you uh, have the can very uh, shaken up so that you don't get large speckles and dots on there because they will basically stop out that area. I put it in for another four minutes and here I am stopping out um, areas all over except for where the text is and that's both in the top portion that's dark and over the area that is the moon. So I'm going around all of the letters on this and then after I have stopped it all out and it has dried I put it into the acid bath for an hour uh, for a full hour to bite down really far. I want an embossed technique here um, and then I checked it after I uh, had put it into the acid so here it's come back out of the acid and you can see that it's in there pretty deep and uh, then I did it for another hour uh, to make sure that it was as deep as I wanted it to be. Then I start cleaning it off. First I'm using mineral spirits, which is what we've used before to get the hard ground or stop out on there. You'll see it's not completely coming off like uh, it easily did before uh, when we were using just hard ground. The reason is, is we have that spray paint on there. So next I'm taking acetone uh, and putting that on there. That will dissolve the, the spray paint. You can't um, let it sit the same way you do with the mineral spirits um, because acetone will evaporate very quickly. So it starts to work right away. I needed to then put some more of the mineral spirits on it to, to clean it off. And then I took it to the sink and used cleanser on it. 
After that, I put hard ground over it and I did a line etch on the uh, the top section because it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be, including where the text was at on there. And then I'm looking at my image uh, and figuring out exactly where I need to uh, scratch in for the figure. Um, so I keep going back and forth through all of these areas and doing longer etches that are maybe like 20 minutes at a time uh, as I scratch through that. Um, and so I do quite a bit of work and then um, here I'm testing it to see what it actually looks like. I had already done uh, one test before this and uh, this will be the second one. Just ink it up the same way that you do bef that you've done before. Um, wiping it with a tarlatan and then with a piece of paper making sure the back is all cleaned off and um, and then after I've seen what the effects are um, with some soft ground on here I am working into my next area which is stopping out areas including where the text is and the lighter areas of the figure. So what I'm doing by adding the, the soft ground texture on there, I'm adding a cloth texture. Um, I want that in some areas, uh, the darker area of the figure, partly because I don't want the dot pattern that shows up um, from the transfer. So I'm going back over that right there. I'm also doing it over the area where the moon is at, and that was because I wanted well, I needed to fix the area that had not completely transferred. So uh, the dot pattern that will come from doing multiple uh, bitings of different texture from the soft ground will actually be able to replace that area. And after a while, I can get rid of some things. You can see now I'm, I was doing some scraping and burnishing, and I took a lot of that uh, initial layer of... Um, texture that actually came from the transfer off of the moon area and now I'm going in back in on it again there's there was already soft ground on there and so I was biting the soft ground uh, texture in again. The technique that I'm using at this point is I'm, I'm stopping out completely the figure and the sky above. And what I'm going to do is put the plate in after that has dried and do what is called an open bite over the moon and the text. Um, the transition between the text and the moon was a little abrupt for me, so I decided that I wanted to get rid of some of the texture that was in there. And then you can see here I'm, I'm going back in after I have... Um, tested it there and I'm doing some scraping and burnishing some other areas out of that. Uh, when you open bite like that you don't always know what the texture is going to be and I kind of liked that idea for the area of the moon. Here I'm doing some scraping and burnishing inside of the the letters over the moon because they're holding a little bit too much of the ink. I originally wanted them to just be white on top of a fairly white moon that had a slight bit of texture but as I kept working on this plate what I realized was that um, that bite of two hours was actually a little too much and um, so the the letters continued to hold the ink a little bit more. Now um, I had soft grounded the plate and um, I'm putting some hard ground back on top of it um, so there's a texture in that in that soft ground uh, and then I bit the plate. I was putting a random texture of stop out across the plate uh, because I wanted interesting texture there but not all uh, one cohesive um, amount so that it looked like the fabric all across the moon. I only wanted it in some areas and not in others. So I keep going back and forth and doing similar things like that. I now continue to uh, put stop out inside of those letters every time I'm, I'm putting this back into the acid because um, I don't want them biting down anymore. There are a few times that I actually let them bite with the soft ground texture in there so that they become a little grayer. You can see again I'm stopping out parts of the the moon in in this area and the figure. Um, the more that I let some of that soft ground appear in um, areas of the sky area and on the figure it kind of softens that up and doesn't make it as obvious of a texture in there uh, and it makes it look more like a drawing in the end so I keep doing areas of the sky and putting lines through their hard ground lines to really make that dark uh, and I'm getting the texture a little closer to the way I want it uh, in the background but I'll do some more open bites on this as well because I need um, 
I need that to have texture in it, but I need it to not be um, so precise and obvious of a texture. I could have bitten the plate originally uh, after the transfer uh, a little bit deeper than what I did. Uh, it would have been darker and would have looked more like the uh, original image had. Uh, but what I tend to do is use this soft ground effect of uh, just changing that and making it a little bit more like a drawing and not quite so much like a photograph or at least a dot pattern photograph. Um, and the reason that I changed it a little bit uh, on this particular plate was because I wanted to do the, the elements with the embossing with the text. Uh, doing that transfer actually works really well if you want to do something with the embossing like that because it can get the image onto the plate very easily for you. Uh, but I'm mixing the different techniques here and um, it wouldn't be necessarily the way that you would just develop a plate if you were only doing the transfer method on, on your plate. Uh, you'll notice I do a lot of scraping and burnishing. Uh, I take lots of layers off because I want that pattern as you're, you're seeing some of the texture that's showing up in the background there and even some of it that's on the figure. Uh, I want it to be more natural and not to look exactly like the soft ground. Um, so I need to put it on there multiple times, scrape it and burnish it and, and, and keep playing around with it and mix it in with some uh, hard ground lines as well. You can't see it so much in the upper part uh, in the sky, but you saw originally where there was text up there and I had to manipulate that so that my final print doesn't look like what my actual image did to begin with. Um, so you can see that I'm just lightening and darkening areas until I get it where I want it to be. There were probably eight different proofs and it took several weeks to actually get this plate the way that I wanted it to look. And these are just some ways that you can develop your etching plate, but hopefully it gives you some ideas of things that are possible with these techniques.